Patrick, and I'm joining you here today with the Ape Makeover. Um, members of the Ape community with Guy Kawasaki and Sean Welch have been um, we're all reading the Ape book, and we decided to have five people come on and talk with them about their self-publishing project. And um, Guy and Sean are going to give them a critique based on some information that they sent them. So welcome, and thanks for coming, everybody. Um, Guy, would you like to say hello? Hi, this is Guy Kawasaki, co-author of Ape, and uh, I want to thank Peggy for making this happen logistically because it is a nightmare, <laughs> and uh, I also want to thank my co-author Sean for uh, making me look smarter than I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so I'll introduce myself. I am Sean, uh, Guy, the co-author of Ape as well, and I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Definitely. And then we'll go to Don. Hi, Don Sturgill in Idaho, writer, dreamer, believer, and thanks to all you guys putting this together. This is going to be fun. Mike? Mike Ball from uh, Clear Lake, Iowa. I'm hiding out in my office while my family is asleep. Um, the author, primary author um, of the Brand Survival Guide to the Marketing Apocalypse. Awesome. Hi, Pamela. Hi, I'm Pam Beeson. I'm in Bellingham, Washington. I'm the author of The Only Witness, as well as other mysteries and romances, and I look forward to hearing your advice. Awesome. Hi, Roland. Hi, Pig. I'm Roland Bird in St. George, Utah, and I'm the author of The Pie of Life, a uh, self-help and motivational book. Awesome. Okay, so how this is going to run is um, Sean actually set up a PowerPoint with the information on it um, for all the people who are, have joined us. And we're going to start with Don's book. We're going to have 10 minutes for each book approximately. And I'm going to turn the screen over to Sean. He's going to uh, pull the PowerPoint up. We're going to talk about Don Sturgill's book first. Um, all right, so the first book is Don. Uh, at Road Turn. Um, Don wrote a book called Dream Into It, The Roadmap to uh, Freedom. It is currently live on Amazon, correct? Isn't that right, That's Don? That's correct, yes. Um, and so, you know, we have, so the way this is going to work is everybody sent us a whole bunch of information. Um, we're going to kind of click through it real quick um, and then Guy and myself will provide feedback on you know what you see, and then if you want, uh, you know when we kind of introduce you, you can t if you want you can either have us get a first impression on the book, or if you want to give like an elevator pitch for your book, uh, you can do that as well. So um, you know if you want to kind of give us a thirty second explanation of what your book is, we can dive into uh, the stuff that you sent us. Great. Uh, so. Do you want to do you want to go ahead and give us a quick sh sh sure. shout out of your book? Sure. The, the the book came about as part of a project I was working on down in southeastern Utah. It's been about two three years ago now. Uh, it was near the Navajo Indian Reservation. I was working with a small business administration project, a business incubator, and my job as a writer publicist was to uh, help build. Um, clientele to get people to come in. They had built this excellent state-of-the-art facility with office spaces and and an executive secretary, secretary and all the equipment needed to for uh, entrepreneurs to come in. Had a small business, a development center business counselor right there to help people out, and the place was empty. You know, so they thought, well, we need Don to come down here and do some advertising for us. Well, as I went out in the community and, and, and talked to the folks there, it wasn't a problem. Everyone knew about the incubator. The problem was, and, and here's the kicker on it all, the problem was we had people there who had dreams, who had ideas, who, who could do well without a doubt, who had skills. The problem was they didn't believe they could do it. So, so then I saw that my job was to develop some way to get people from, uh, especially from the reservation, but from this entire, and by the way, it's the poorest county in Utah, San Juan County. Poor county, over 50% Navajo population, and also the Ute Reservation there. So my job was to get people um, 
to believe that they could take that step and come into the to the office and, and ask for for help. So that's how the project was born. Dream into it. Um, that's one thing I think I want to change is is the title, but at the time it seemed appropriate. And the big deal on that was it was the URL I could find that was available. You know, dreamintoit.com. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure it fits. I I came up uh, to Idaho to to maybe take it to a corporate level was the idea, but uh, there's there's kind of a turnoff to to the to the idea. It seems like uh, you know you don't have to just sit in your chair and and money comes to you. Or something, you know, but that's not it at all. I yeah. Do. Um, so, guy, I'm looking at the. If you click on my screen, I'm looking at the uh, Amazon page right now. Do you want to give a first reactions on the cover? Yeah, I. Uh, I can't <laughs> say that I love your cover. You know. Um, I paid five bucks for it, guy. Oh. Uh, well, you know, at least <laughs> it was cheap. Fiber? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but. I I I think you should maybe pay more and get a cover that speaks to this, you know, dreaming about entrepreneurship and doing it and changing the world because you know, this is kind of reminds me of that scene in Buzz Lightyear where, you know, the claw is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, um I, I don't think this cover plays very well. I don't think it really uh, does justice to your book, frankly. Yeah, good, no doubt. Yeah, um, I think that your price is good at two ninety nine. Um, I think that your price is good because it gives you a little bit of room to put it on sale. Um, but I noticed that it's only seventy six pages long. Is there a reason that you're doing it as a full Kindle and not a Kindle single? I don't understand the question, Sean. Oh, okay. So there's two programs. There's Kindle, KDP Select, but then mm -hmm. Amazon has another program called Kindle Singles, which are designed to be, I think, less than fifteen thousand words, um, and they're you know kind of short, shorter books. Uh, so at seventy six pages, you would probably qualify for the Kindle Single program. And what that does is it lets you compete with other books that are at your same you know, length as opposed to you know competing with books that are 400 pages long. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, this is really it's not a, a novel. It's it's a <laughs> it's a field manual, if you will. It gets right, right into the to the deal and, and how you, how you put the program together. Right, and it's only it's only on Kindle, correct? It's not print. Well, only the the copies I've printed it out. I've you know I started out. I took the program into the county jail. Boy, that's ugly. That. That didn't right. come through well, but into the county jail down in San Juan County, I had a captive audience down there teaching. Uh, <laughs> to it. Yeah, and I, and I still get you know occasionally an email from one of those guys. I'd go down every Friday Friday night and, and teach it. Yeah. Most recently, I taught it at the homeless shelter here in Idaho Falls, and and I've also taken it to uh, you know corporate levels and and to classrooms and 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 that whole bit. But well, um, one thing I one thing I would do for sure. Um, because you have both a print book and a Kindle book, you actually have page numbers listed in your Kindle book, but a Kindle doesn't have. <laughs> so gotcha. I, I would, you know, make two separate uh, versions of your manuscript so that you don't have page numbers listed in the table of contents of the Kindle. Exactly. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, good job on your publishing company. It's not, you know, Don Press. So that's. <laughs> You know, Smart Road Turn, I think, is a good name. Um, can, can I add that Yeah. You know, I, I see your description, and this first sentence, more than any, more than, I think you want to say more than any other, but it says more than another. Uh, so you're either, it's either a typo or you're extremely modest. <laughs> um, more than any other self-help book or time management system, dream into it is a clear path to getting to where you want to go. I I know you mean any other, but I I think that is too too bold a statement. Um, no, what, yeah, guy, what I was trying to say is more than just another. It's more oh. than just another just another self-help book. It's it's a it's a you know short clear path circuit rocket to stardom, right? 
Okay, yeah, so that. Would, yeah, I would add a little bit of formatting to your book description because it's kind of short. Uh, I don't think you need to end it with read this book. Um, okay. But, you know, explain, make it so that it's a couple paragraphs and not just, you know, three sentences that are crammed in there. Um, and what Guy and I actually found with Ape, you know, we put our Seth quote, you know, nuts and bolts, Ape is the nuts and bolts, you know, whatever. We put that as the first line of our book description. Mm -hmm. um, there's a separate category for editorial reviews, but with that being our first line of the book description, when you do a Google search for Ape and it comes up, the description that it shows is Seth's quote, right? So um, know that whatever you know, the first 140 characters or whatever your description, that's going to be, you know, the hot or not that people are going to see in a search result that make them gotcha. decide to buy the book or to click. Gotcha. It. Thank so, you. So, so the bummer is, Don, everybody's going to see and be confused by your first phrase. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll change tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to check back later and give you a, a score. So what is your website? It's uh, dreamintuit.com. Right, exactly, and and I'm really in a quandary, wondering again if I change the title, then I then that uh that domain. You know, a URL is a URL. Um, I don't think that, um, you know, right. I don't think Dream Into It, the Roadmap to Freedom's a bad name. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's not. A, it sounds like another book on self. You know, you say you're not just another book <laughs> right. on self-help, right. but, you know, Dream Into It, Roadmap to Freedom does kind of sound like every other book. Well, gotcha. why, don't you, why don't you just call your book Roadmap to Freedom? There you go. I, mean, I like your subtitle more than your title. Yeah, and mm. then, you know, it would be a lot easier, you know, your website has kind of that country road type thing. It'd be a lot easier to find a cover that, you know, it was along the lines of, you know, roadmap to freedom yeah. as opposed to, you know, this dream into it type thing. Gotcha. So we have, we're, it's almost time to finish up with Don. Okay. Any last, Don, do you have any questions that you want to ask before it's time to move on? No, you guys are, are right on, and, and I knew I had some um, butt kicking coming on the work I've done. It's like, you know, the plumber's faucet always leaks yeah so you know and uh, I just haven't done the work that needs to be done and, and, and so glad to get this this um, encouragement and guy thanks for for the article interview the art artisanal article interview SEO smarty and smarty put that on a, her her site today and, yeah and I saw she, that thank she you. really enjoyed it thank you thank you excellent can I make I'm two, can through, I make through, a guys. social media note for Don go ahead <laughs> um, so Don, I was wondering why you don't do your Twitter name as at Don Sturgill so people could find you easier. Well, you know, because some other goofball named Don Sturgill <laughs> How uh, dare was, they. was smart enough to capture that. I've been doing the road turn thing because when I you know, first came blogging and, and I just used uh, roadturn.com as my... Uh, so I've been using road turn and it occurred to me at some point, you know, maybe you ought to use your name. Right. So when I got around to it, somebody had already captured it. Middle and middle. It doesn't. Well, I guess I I could, or I could do Donald Sturgill, and I actually have that one. But I've just done road turn, and then Twitter allows you to do uh, to put your name on there as well. So. Right. Right. Um, Good point, then, though, Peg. And your Google Plus cover photo is awesome, um, but your avatar is blurry. Do you have what do you? The your, cover your, your photo? Av yeah, the cover photo, your larger photo on Google Plus is really nice, but your avatar is blurry, your actual photo. Like the one that Sean pulled up at the beginning was blurry, too. You, you know, your, your profile, your picture, your facial picture with the ski cap on? Right. Yeah, yeah it's blurry. It's, it, you know, you probably took it with a cell phone, right? Uh, yeah, pro probably uh, my <laughs> wife think, took it from yeah. the front door, and I was out leaning against the garage. So yeah, yeah I think what they're saying is get a new profile picture. Got, gotcha. It's <laughs> smiling this time, but okay. Um, okay, so thanks, Don. So we're Thank gonna you. move on to Roland Berg. Thank you all.
Ronald, do you want to, or Roland, excuse me, do you want to do, do, you want to do a little um, elevator pitch? Are you ready for that? Yeah, sure. Um, so where the pie life came from, it's I, I designed it to be a book that people could kind of just pop in and out of and get little daily bits of inspiration and motivation and um, you know without having to dive into a really intense read because a lot of times you don't have the time to sit down and really you know get into a book so most of the book you can open it read a page or two and put it down and go on and come back later without missing anything um, and where it came from was over a period of about four years of my life where I went through some massive personal changes changes that people said were impossible I, I made and I just totally transformed my life and wrote lots of letters to you know my wife my children um, different people I cared about and then one day thought hey there's some good stuff in there so I went through and I weeded out uh, not weeded is the wrong word I, I, I took out the little golden bits from those letters and put them into this book. Awesome. Um, so Sean, I'll put you up. Yeah, uh, so you know this book is currently live on Amazon. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it. The Amazon page needs a little work. Um, but uh, for the most part, I think the biggest question that's going to come up is the pie of life versus the life of pie. That yeah. has been the biggest question, yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know. I'm interested to know what Guy thinks about that. Yeah. Guy, do you want to start there? Yeah, well, you know, I would just say uh, uh, I'm the one without the tiger, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen, you know, you know, I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, Guy, you know, your book changed my life. It it just you know put everything into focus for me and I turned my life around and I'm so glad you wrote rich dad poor dad <laughs> so, uh, you know I feel your pain man uh, I, so right I, now yeah right now you have eight one-star reviews on Amazon and, and they're all from people them, who bought the wrong book every right. single one of them is because they bought the wrong book and whose fault is that apparently it was mine <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, and and as soon as I as soon as I got the first review that showed that someone had bought it by mistake, I added that disclaimer. Yeah. At, right at the top of the description. Um, yeah, I mean, I wrote this book in October of 2011. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, well, so first reactions of the cover for me, even at this larger, I don't know if I'm isolated, but even at the larger. Thumbnail size. I can't read the title. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I think that I think that your cover is a little. Um, I wouldn't use a scripted font for the pie of life. Okay. I would make it easier to read because that might help people not buy it by mistake. Um, <laughs> gotcha. And you know I would make it. You know I can't. So yeah, I can't read your cover or the name or the subtitle. Really, the only thing that I see is a letterbox picture that I can't tell what it is. Um, Thank God you don't have a picture of a tiger on your cover. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the cover. As far as the price is concerned, it's right now listed as a Kindle purchase price of 314. Is that because of price matching? Um, or that's because that's the price that 3 3.14, you know. Oh, uh, uh, there you go. Uh, clever. Yeah, see that's <laughs> you know, you know Apple won't let you do that, right? It's got to end in 99. Really? Yeah, you'd have to be 2.99 on the iBook store. Yeah. Okay. Um, Apple redefining pie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's why Apple Maps doesn't work. <laughs> uh, but my biggest pro so my biggest problem with your Amazon description page is the description. Okay. Um, I don't think you need to embed the cover in it because the cover's already up there. Uh, okay. I, you don't need to do the HTML to put the cover in it. I think that it's confusing that you used the same uh, H1, H2, H3 tags that the Amazon.com page itself uses um, because it makes it look like there's a whole bunch of different, you know, this book description is the exact same as your title. Mm -hmm. And so from an HTML perspective, you know, the book description is that. Then you have another section called the pie of life. And then you have, 
you know, a description that's actually formatted as a header. Okay. Um, there's a there's a general rule in design that kind of says is if everything is bold, nothing is bold. Gotcha. Um, and you basically this entire thing is bold. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and that might just be because you you didn't close, you know, a strong tag or something in the HTML and it messed up. But what I would do is, you know, remove the cover, make everything left aligned because mm -hmm. center doesn't really sell the book. Okay. Um, you know, kind of this whole <laughs> how to avoid looking self-published um, in the, you know, in the grand scheme of thing, you want to sometimes it's good to make your book stand out and sometimes by standing out you look self-published okay right so books that come from traditional publishing won't have this kind of rich formatting all inside the description now what they might do if you're using Amazon Author Central you can do things like add additional images and add you know other add your author bio and you know, editorial reviews and not try to fit it all into the book description. I think you're just trying to do too much with the book description. Okay. Um, it looks, you know, just from a, you, have you ever, it, it almost looks like an eBay page, <laughs> and not an Amazon page. Does okay. That you know how eBay kind of fills, you know, with stuff that's bold and head, and I just don't think that you need it. Um, and then, you know, right now, your publisher is CYL Publications. I don't know who that is, which means, you know, it's probably not Roland, so that's probably okay. Um, you're doing decent in the rankings. Is that because people are buying it by mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, I mean, for there, there was a while where it, it really spiked in the rank because people were, and there was, I mean, I had... I think it was November last year. I had like almost a fifty percent return rate on the Kindles. Mm. You know, like wasn't a super happy thing. Right. However, um, I it had settled down at around uh, about ten ten copies a day, and then it just recently dropped. But I think it was because I did a final free promo to try to get some more reviews, and and I didn't know that it recalibrated everything at the end of the promo. Right. Um, yeah, I think that I think that when you clean up the page, maybe get a different cover. Uh, I think that it'll help a lot with okay. the differentiation between the life of Pi and the Pi of Life. I don't think you need to change the title. Um, but another thing that I would do is update your website. Yeah, I need to do um, that. It, I think that I think that you'd be good. I mean. Do WordPress, buy a thirty dollar theme, um, and you know I think I, I think that your website needs a little bit of polish. Um, he actually has another website with his name as well. This yeah, one? my blog. Yeah. Rollandbird.com. Yeah, see, this isn't bad. Um, it's the default theme, but it's a default theme, but it's better than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could um, integrate those together and do a like a do a thirty five forty dollar theme. Okay. That'd yeah. Awesome. Um, and then I got to yeah, update wanted, the cover on that one. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that you made all of your information available. Man, you really like center aligned, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is that a mathematical thing? I'm a little type A. Do it. Do it in circles. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, so here's a question. This ISBN, is that something that you purchased or is that... Um... Uh, that was a purchased one, but it was purchased through CreateSpace. Okay, so is CreateSpace the owner of the ISBN still? Um, it's under CYL Publications. Oh, is that a CreateSpace imprint? No, it's mine. Oh, okay. Um, I think if you have it as your own imprint, you might be able to move it off. But if you're... You know, I mean, here's the, here's the big question, and Guy, I'll let you, you know, chime in on this. If you release a new edition, it'll reset your reviews and ratings. Um, if you buy a new ISBN that you own, do it under, you know, some publishing company that's you and not CreateSpace, mm -hmm. and then resubmit this title, um, It you know, resubmit it as like Pi Life 2nd Edition or something okay. like that. 
So you think that would be cover. beneficial? Well, it would reset all of your reviews so that you don't... I mean, it would start you over from zero, but if you want to clear out those eight reviews that are negative, um, you know, it, it, it is a good way to start over because if you release a second edition, um, you know, you'll be able to, one, own the ISBN, so if you decide to go somewhere else, you can. Mm -hmm. Two, it'll be an opportunity for you to update the cover and do stuff like that. Uh, and it, three, it'll kind of be a good way to relaunch and rebrand to okay. differentiate from Life of Pi. Okay. We do need to move on, Sean. Okay. Uh, Mina, you are next. Do you have headphones? Because we were getting some feedback from you. I think she's muted. You, you need to unmute up in the top right corner. Hi, Mina. Do you have headphones? I can't hear you. Can you hit the unmute button up at the top? You know, every Hangout I ever do goes through this. I don't know why they just, instead of putting buttons, why don't they just say unmute? Why don't they just put text <laughs> up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mina, can you, can you uh, say something now? I oh, see. I can hear you. I, okay. Is that better? Can you yes, hear me Yes, we can yeah. hear you now. Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, do you have headphones? Do you have headphones, Mina? Because we're actually uh, getting feedback from you. Oh no. Okay. Well, we'll no. Try. Okay. Well, do you want you to do? Do you want to do a brief intro of your book? Um. Yes. My my little wombat book. It's um. I think it's gone. Uh, I've had a couple of people look at it, and it, uh, besides my editor, and I think it's a bit too too uh, wordy at this stage. I've decided, so I'll have to. It's going to be a bit of a slash and burn type of situation. I have to get rid of a lot of material. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, where it is, where it's, it's sort of sitting in the middle now, it needs it needs to be the um, developed further or just really cut back. Okay. Um, is this a is this a picture book? So is it like a 32-page picture book, um, or? Oh no, it's mostly it, it's mo it's just mostly it's just a chapter book with um, okay. two or three illustrations thrown in. Um, yeah, mainly a chapter book, so mostly wording. For seven to nine-year-old children, is that correct? Well, um, sorry, uh, is that just a? Uh, it's it's. Um, Supposed to be the first in a series that I'm thinking of, um, the, the Adventures of Dear. The, there's two wombats, Wiggly and Wobbly, but it actually started off as an ABC book. So they took over, and that's why I'm here now with with um, you know this, this book that I'm not quite sure where to go. Whether you know if, if I keep developing it, it'll just get out of hand, and so I need to put a stop to it. So um, I, I thought I'd have a 32-page book to make it easier, but um, I've also got the ABC component at the end of it, so it's a bit different from a straight chapter book, and it's not a, an ABC book. So um, I've also had feedback from a couple of um, buddies that um, say that it's really probably a bit too. It's for an older age group, so. So you um, kind of need to pick. Be, you need to pick if it's an ABC book for younger kids who, who are learning to read, or a chapter book for children who can already read. That's right. I mean, the the ABC book is more really um, what I uh, the ABC section of it. I, I decided to include it rather than scrubbing it completely because it has information about actual gemstones, um, mm -hmm. except for the letter Y. There's no gemstone or mineral for that. Um, so I thought I wanted to include it more of a, a a bit of a reference for children and also to maybe motivate them and inspire them to go out and and you know fossick around in the fields and so on. Um, and then they can actually have that as a reference point for them, rather than just tossing it out. Because I mean, by the time you're you're about nine years old, you certainly know your ABC. But um, I thought <laughs> I'd just include that anyway, more as a uh, a complement to the book. Okay. Well, and also, it'll have, they'll have photographs of all the gemstones. Okay. So let's pull up what Sean has that you sent in. Uh, so the first thing. Um, and actually, now that we're talking, it might be best to yep. meet Mina. There we go. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to share is 
so we don't have a cover yet. This book is so as as far as all the other books are concerned, this one is probably in the most development stage, which is fine. Um, you know, some people are in the entrepreneur stage, some are in the you know publisher, and this one is definitely in the author stage. Um, this sketch, Mina, was a mock-up of one of the. Correct? Is that a yes? Um, I would say based off of this sketch, it is more um, more older audience than younger audience. Uh, I think that this looks a, a, maybe it's just maybe it's the combination of the mouth, eyes, and teeth. Um, but if this is the art direction that you want to go, I think that this is a older audience uh, as opposed to a younger audience. Um, Question for you, because I have your manuscript. Um, is this? Uh, let me see if I can share the manuscript. Is the manuscript that you sent over? Um, is this actually kind of your chapter content? Like, did you just copy and paste this into Word? Yes. I guess. Uh, let, me, um, let me hit it again. Go sorry. Ahead, Say that one more time. I think it, maybe if you just answer in the chat, I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> yes. um, my, well, I guess my 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 comment was uh, with this Word document, it's not formatted with Word styles. So when you start going into your editing, uh, or when you start going into your publishing stages, uh, it'll be very important that your Word document is formatted with styles. So that, you know, for example, this is formatted with a quote style, which is great. But then the attribute, which looks different, is also formatted with quote. This first paragraph is an introduction. It's a normal paragraph. Then you have a normal paragraph, then another normal paragraph. And then this one is a normal paragraph, but it has an indentation. So each one of these, because they look different, should have a different word style. Um, that way, when you go to you know your designer or something in InDesign or anywhere else that's going to produce the book it knows you know right now if you were to export this uh, as an ebook or try to take it to somewhere to have it professionally laid out because this chapter quote and I'll see if I can actually zoom in a little bit um, because this quote has the same paragraph style as the attribute both of these would end up looking exactly the same as far as a paragraph is concerned even though you have a manual override that makes this one right indent or right aligned and this one's left aligned. Um, so I think that as it'll be a lot easier for you down the road if you start formatting your document um, as you write as opposed to trying to do it after the fact. Um, Guy, do you want to do comments on age group and you know kind of yeah um, stones and stuff? Yeah, you know, for one thing, uh, I don't think a book can be both uh, a letter book and a chapter book. So this looks to me like a chapter book more than a letter book. But regardless, uh, you should pick one and make it that. I, I don't think you can um, walk the line uh, between those two. And from what I'm seeing here, I, th I think it's more chapter book than letter book. And uh, then, uh, you know, I, I would think that one of the big challenges for this will be uh, illustration, because I, I know when I read my kids, my this, my seven-year-old, you know, it's it cannot be a book that's all text. So uh, I, I think you're gonna make some, uh, you have to make some investments in art, not just the cover, but the interior of this, uh, which is very different from what Sean and I had to do, for example, with Ape. Right, all we did is took screenshots. Right. Um, so let's talk about your social media. Oh, wait, I think or, yeah, I think that Amina wanted to say. Mina, did you want to say something? I can't get her sound to go for some reason. Hmm. It will not. Sorry, sorry, Mina. If you want to type stuff in the chat, um, Sean can read it. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So social media? Yeah, I was just going to pull up oh, okay. her social media pages. Uh, Peggy, do you want to comment on her um, Twitter? On Twitter, 
Actually, the the thing that I just had was that um, your avatar is blurry too. Um, I think it's the same one that's on Google Plus. Um, and I guess Itria Publishing is your is your um, shoot. I totally just lost the hangout here. Is your hangout? I mean, sorry, which is your your company's name? And I can't get her back. Can't get her sound to go on for some reason. So um, I'm just not sure if the publishing company name is the best name for Twitter, since I don't think people would recognize it. But I don't know how you guys feel about that. I'm always for using your full name as social media handles. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it makes it easier for people to find you and recognize you as the author. Right. So I'm sorry we're having sound difficulties with you, Mina. Um, we do kind of need to move on to Pamela. We'll follow up an email, though, because this one is very much in the development stages. So, yeah. Um, when you get uh, more illustrations and kind of work through uh, the development of your book, maybe we can do a follow-up uh, and do it as like a you know take two uh, to figure out how you know how things progressed from A to P, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank um, you for joining from Australia. Yay. Um, um, so next up we have Pamela. And uh, Pamela, do you want to do a brief introduction on your book? Sure. Uh, I apologize for not having a close microphone on this headset. Um, I'm kind of all over the map as an author because I have both traditionally published books with Berkeley Prime Crime and then I have self-published books as well. And this book, The Only Witness, has actually been my bestseller as a self-published book. And the idea behind it is I work as a private investigator. And I've worked on a lot of cases where small children testified in court cases. And I've also always been interested in animal intelligence. So, and I know that gorillas are supposed to have the same intelligence as a five-year-old child. So I wanted to explore the idea of what would happen if a signing gorilla was the only witness to a crime. So that's the idea behind the only witness. Cool. Um, I had really great sales with it for a few months right after a uh, Kindle Select giveaway in which nearly 20,000 books were downloaded. Ah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, and and uh, then, of course, sales have just been dwindling, and I'm wondering how to get them started again, and I'm sort of wondering if I shot myself in the foot with giving away so many. It was only over a 24-hour period, <laughs> so it was wow. a little alarming. You know, Guy and I, so there was a... Uh... I don't remember where I don't I'm not the you know original you know person of this quote but somebody once said in talking to piracy uh, you know whether or not people are stealing books um, don't look at it as you know a sale lost but a reader gained um, it's one of those things even if even if you didn't sell it and make money off of it you gained a reader uh, I'm which, trying. <laughs> you know, that so it so that's you know kind of a silver lining but um, first off, congratulations. I mean, it has a uh, 4.7 star rating with 65 reviews. Um, mm -hmm. I think that as far as the, you know, ratings are concerned, how many of those, so just out of curiosity, how many of those ratings came after KDP? So, or after your free promo? They've, they've kind of trickled in over time. Okay. So, so um, I didn't get an avalanche all at once. I uh, I did have oh maybe twenty or so when I did the free day on Kindle Select. Okay. Well, it does look like that a lot of these people have verified purchases. So mm -hmm. there's a really good chance that even if you didn't get sales from KDP, of those twenty thousand, you know, you have sixty five reviews. So a lot of people came back and you know left reviews. So it wasn't you know all lost. Um, I think that your price is great at four ninety nine. I think that that has been proven to be the sweet spot for, uh, you know, this kind of fiction mystery type novel. Isn't that right? Guy doesn't bury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four ninety nine is the absolute sweet spot 
for Kindle uh, books of that length. Um, Guy, do you want to say something about the cover? Yeah, I, I, I think that that cover, the, the font is kind of too delicate, too hard to see. You know, your name in black type on a dark blue background uh, is hard to see. Um, I, you know, it's, it's just, I think your, your cover could be made a lot better with a fairly minimal effort. Uh, you know, of course, we love the ape image, uh, <laughs> as you might guess. You would. <laughs> but uh, I, I love the concept, and you know, I think you are a good example of a person who could use social media to build a marketing platform because you you are credible. I mean, it's not like you know, one day you just decided to write a mystery novel like this. You actually have this background in. In you know criminal and forensics and you know what have you, mm -hmm. so I, I think you're in that sweet spot where you develop a, a brand, a reputation, a positioning, a credibility. So when you write your book, of course people will read it, and that seems to be happening. Yeah, uh, as far as you're concerned, I think that it looks good. I would, um, you know, there's a Chicago Manual of Style says that there's two ways to add emphasis to things. It's uh, bold or it's either all capital letters or italics uh, and they don't emphasize that you use bold uh, but in a web page like this I would go ahead and use bold as opposed to making the because you know all capital letters is kind of hard to read unless it's you know a font that's designed for it or you know styled for it I think that you would be better off if these were just bold instead of you know typing it as all capital letters um, okay. But I like the way that you separated it out, where it's you know a missing baby, a haunted detective, you know unusual, you know it kind of, you know if I were looking at this as like a bullet list, that's what I would read, uh, and then you know I love the premise of the book, by the way. I think that oh, it's a very, you. I think that it's a very uh, interesting premise. Um, but no, no, I, notice that nothing is center justify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then. I think that, um, you know, by the way, also, when we get to your social media stage, you have a very good author profile page. Mm -hmm. um, very good picture, oh, very you. good descriptions. Uh, you're pulling in your tweets. You can see your other books. Um, that's some that, you know, good job there. Um, like Guy said, the, uh, the cover... I got more out of your 30-second, you know, elevator pitch um, than I did from the cover. Like, looking at the cover, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, guess what your book was about. Uh, I, I would have guessed that it had to do with monkeys. Um, <laughs> okay. But, you know, I think that, so I think that you could do a little bit with your cover. Um, as far as your interior design is concerned, it's actually really good. It's not, it's not, um, it's not bad. I like that you, you know, separate it out with like, you know, Monday, 5.50 p.m., and then you start the chapter and it goes into it. Um, another thing that you did well is, you know, not indenting the first line after, uh, you know, the first line of a paragraph. It's not indented like everything else is. Uh, you know, if you want to jazz it up, you could add a drop caps into your chapter open so that... Um, you know, the, it kind of like Ape did, how the first letter is larger. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you might be able to, you know, if, if that's your style, you can do it to, you know, take it or leave it. But as far as the interior design is concerned, I didn't look at it and think, you know, this needs help. Pamela, uh, who, who designed the interior and who laid it out for you? I did. <laughs> oh. and, and how did you just self-taught? I mean, you just decided that's the way it should be? Or how did you figure out what to do? Oh, just looking at published books, and then I've, I've worked as an editor and a writer yeah. over the years, so... Uh, Hallelujah, I, more power to you. <laughs> yeah. I've written several books on using Microsoft Word and such, uh -huh. so... Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks good. Uh, I would... The only thing that I don't... The only thing that rubs me the wrong way about the interior design is that your header or your running header is a sans serif font, not a serif font, um, just because it feels 
you, mixing the font styles for some reason feels off. Um, but that's such a little nitpick detail. I don't think that, you know, I think that in reality you actually did a very good job. Um, when you design the front cover, I would, you know, take a look at the back cover as well. Um, I don't think that you need to do the scripted font. I think that if you go back to, you know, I would do it sans serif since everything else on here is sans serif. Um, okay. You know, make that sans serif as well. Um, but all in all, as far as author publisher is concerned, I think you did a really good job. So yeah. let's focus on entrepreneur because that seems like where we can help best help the makeover. Yes, help. <laughs> you did a great job on your um, Goodreads author bio. Thank and you. you. A, and you have a nice presence there, which is nice. Have you done yeah. anything on Goodreads besides set up your profile and? I did. I've done a couple of giveaways with mm -hmm. uh, my books, but uh, I can't say that I really know how to use Goodreads very effectively. Yeah, it's, it's fairly new, but it seems effective for some people. And and I'm con constantly confused between my my book rating page and my author page, and et cetera. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, are you, are yeah. you on Twitter, Pamela? Yes, I am. I am at Pam oh, sure. Beeson. Okay. Yeah. Um, you d you should put a link to your Twitter account on your Google Plus profile because it wasn't there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that. So yeah, this, I'm brand I'm brand new to Google Plus, so yeah. Load this, Google Plus up with all the links and um, your Google your Goodreads. Every profile that you can do links to on there, there's ton. It's like unlimited links on Google Plus. Okay. And there's yeah. ton. You can do like unlimited space on there to write about your books and um, so oh, you can okay. use it all. There's lots of it's good SEO. Okay, so guy, I'm just learning. <laughs> so guy, here's a question that I want to ask mm -hmm. you. Um, mm -hmm. to kind of end out because we only have a couple more minutes left yep. for Pam. Yep. Um, so she has a social media presence on mm -hmm. Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. All mm -hmm. real name, all activity, mm -hmm. nothing's bad. The mm -hmm. book is selling well. Mm -hmm. What can she do to restart momentum to, um, you know, to get into things? I mean, should she, how, how can she start pitching the bloggers and going to Netgear or, you know, NetGalley or, you know, stuff like that. How can she start getting attention back on the book? Because she's doing everything she should be doing, um, but there's no momentum. Or at least she's everywhere she needs to be, but there's no momentum. Well, I, I think that, you know, with the cover redesign, a sort of refreshing of it, and, you, you know, I hate to say this, but you, I, I think many people, because they're too close to it, and I do this myself, you know, we think that, like right now, I don't know, 60 days after Ape came out, we think that everybody who is interested in writing a book already knows that Ape exists, right? <laughs> and, and you know how wrong that is, right? Yeah. So, you know, roughly 0.0001% of the people who are thinking of writing a book now know that Ape exists. Well, we've been pounding at it for 60 days, and we think, well, sh you know, we've had 200 reviews. Everybody knows about it already. So I think uh, this is one of those things where it's easy for me to say and give advice for other people to do, but for me to do is very hard, which is just pretend that, you know, your book is brand new and go out there again. And, you know, yes, some people may say, you know, I've been there and done that, but... Yeah, I, I, you're talking to a guy who I have automated my Twitter stream so that it it retweets things four times, eight hours apart, and it's because you you just cannot assume that everybody who's interested in something has seen it already. So go for it again. Just pretend it's brand new. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing that we're kind of learning with the eight process. Um, entrepreneur in, in all of our slides when we're giving this things you know we say yeah it took us you know eight weeks to do the outline six weeks to write it you know 12 weeks to edit it um, but then the entrepreneur bit is forever you know as long as we want <laughs> yes. as long as we want somebody to buy our book mm -hmm. we have to be marketing it which means mm -hmm. talking about it every you know no week can we start a Monday and say well everybody probably knows about it I probably don't need to talk about my book this week Exactly. Uh, where I probably don't need to go, you know, find something about, you know, a mystery novel or find some, 
you know, start curating content about, you know, signing apes that, you know, <laughs> we can, you know, some ape starts figuring something out and it's a cool story and, you know, I don't need to start building up that audience. That we never stops. Yeah. We, right. should really, we really need to move on. Sorry, Pamela. Okay. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, Mike Ball, would you like to do an intro for your book? Wake yeah, up, it's your so, turn. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, okay, so good. Um, I got into writing because my first big boy job involved uh, writing all the content for 20 to 30 clients at a time across social media, which ended up being you know almost 100 blogs a week and hundreds of tweets a day and so on and so on. So that's what my job was for oh, oh, almost two years. Um, and while I was doing that, I worked with a couple authors. I worked with Harvey McKay and I worked with Mark Sanborn. Um, mm -hmm. And they both just told me at some point, they're like, you know, after writing this much, you should probably get to your own book. Um, mm -hmm. And the problem is that there's so many different ideas in my head that every time I started writing, I came up with something random that didn't fit with what I wrote the last time. Um, <laughs> this year, I came up with the idea and just said, you know, it'd be nice to have a book that had all those ideas in one place so when I needed to find them, I could just have the one book instead of going through my Kindle library or my bookshelf. Um, to find the one idea that I needed at the time. And then I started writing it, and I said, okay, I don't know enough about the things I want to write about, so I started reaching out to people. And um, surprisingly, a lot of people were not hesitant at all to join the project. So my contributor list grew um, pretty quickly with some people who make me nervous because they're uh, well-established professional authors um, or entrepreneurs or anything like that. So now I have... Um, I have well over a book or two written worth of my own content, but I'm collecting the content back from my contributors now, and then I'm essentially going to fill in the gaps and finish up the manuscript. Then I'll be kickstarting the project and publishing it on Kindle, and then um, we'll do hard copies, probably print to order to start. And I actually do have an illustrator as well who's working on some images within the book and um, the cover. Awesome. Great. So... Um... Marketing apocalypse. First thing, so if you, I, I, am I, uh, is the laptop uh, isolated or whatever? I have your, mm -hmm. you want this one up? Yeah, make the laptop up. Okay, there you go. Um, so I, if you look at this, we have Mike's marketing apocalypse logo in the middle, and then I put your real Google Plus real person account image on the bottom right, um, mostly because I think the very first thing you should do is get that logo on a shirt and retake the same image <laughs> so that it's a real person image with the logo because that logo doesn't tell me who you are that I, you know if I'm you know associating with Mike Ball uh, I don't you know associate with the logo not Batman not that Batman's not great but you know I think that you know if you're if you're thinking about marketing this whole thing um, a real person face sells more than an anonymous logo especially when that logo is new well, and you know, if you have to have a shirt that makes no sense, wear an ape shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you have the brand survival guide to the marketing apocalypse, and you have this really cool logo on your website. Um, Peggy, can you switch over to my to me talking? Sure. The website. There you so go. I'm gonna do. So right now, you have this website, marketing apocalypse, all this stuff. But you did something really interesting here that I'm going to suggest that you do to your book. You have the marketing apocalypse, and then your thing is the brand survival guide. And your URL, URL is actually marketing apocalypse, the brand survival guide. If you switch back, Peggy, uh, to my laptop, I think that you should change the name of your book to marketing apocalypse, the brand survival guide, um, <laughs> as opposed to the brand survival guide to the marketing apocalypse. I think that you know, marketing apocalypse is your brand, and it's a lot stronger if you title subtitle with marketing apocalypse and then brand survival guide, right? That's and I call. literally I threw this cover together uh, in you know like three minutes on um, you know in Photoshop. I took your logo, slapped it on there, um, put a crack thing, and then just did Mike Ball. Um, your cover designer can do a lot more work to it, uh, but you know, I think that your brand presence would be a lot stronger if you didn't hide marketing apocalypse at the very end of your title. And gotcha. you did that, I mean, you did that yourself with your URL, 
I mean, you're, you, if you look at this URL, it is marketingapocalypse.com slash the brand survival guide. <laughs> like, that's your website, right? Cool. So, you know, I think that the first thing you should do is consider changing the title so that Marketing Apocalypse stays the brand. Um, I'm so old. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good suggestion. Yeah, and if you it want, is. I'll send I'll send you the Photoshop file I did for this. <laughs> uh, so Charge him a thousand dollars, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean literally. So this image, uh, I'll see if I can isolate just the image. Um, I mean, when that's I, cool. Yeah. So this image, I don't. Is it? Sent, yeah. So this is your logo, right? I just dropped that on there. This crack background, I went to a free stock photo website that was royalty free, found, you know, did a search for cement wall crack, found it, dropped it on there, adjust the color so that it was on a white background, uh, and then just put your name in big bold letters. And you'll notice Which looks I make awesome. this really small. <laughs> Even at its smallest level, you can still read Marketing Apocalypse and Mike Ball. Um, you know, so not saying that this is the direction that you have to go, but I think that it's a lot stronger if you make, you know, your title what your brand is. Yeah, that's a good call. So, Guy, what do you want to say about the story and using co-authors and contributors and how he can keep a central brand and all that stuff? Uh, first of all, Sean, man, I am like, you know, just so impressed that you did that. I just... Oh, really? No, no wonder I made you my co-author. Yeah. Jesus, well, man, I am so freaking smart to pick you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, I like the concept. Uh you know, there's sort of two ways to go where it's purely your thought and then there's this other way where you tap into these other people and properly market it. I think this tapping into other people can be very effective. Uh, the, the, the tricky part for me is making it all cogent and, you know, where things are, they don't have to be exactly consistent. You don't want them to say the same thing because you don't need multiple ones then. But right. I think that would be the challenge, and uh, you know the the upside of that is you'll get more people trying to help you market your book because they have you know, they want to uh, get a piece get more glory. Uh, but I think it's a very clever idea and well done. Yeah, and I think that to speak to what Guy was saying, one thing that you can do um, because at, you know for your job you're going to have to. Um, let's, turn off my screen share. So for your job, you're going to have to worry about dealing with a whole bunch of people contributing content. You need to make sure that you have one content editor that's going through and making uh -huh. sure that a voice is consistent. Um, so everything that somebody contributes to you, um, bounce back and forth a couple drafts between you and the person who wrote it, and then send it to the same content editor to make sure that the voice stays consistent between each contributor because you're too close to do it yourself. All right. um, you're too close to figure out, you know, how so so I think that you know, you can save money on a cover design because I just did it for you, but <laughs> <laughs> put that money into a content editor and a copy editor because um, one of the big challenges that you'll face having so many contributors to the same book, which is a great idea. Um, you just need to make sure that you keep the voice consistent throughout. How, how many contributors will there be at the end? Um, I'm about 22 right now, and I just cut off. Um, I had a few invitations out, but I just called it quits because okay. a lot more people said yes than I thought they would. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, well, I think you um, know one thing that would make the back cover or you know other parts of the book interesting is to have every contributor's picture up there. Um, yeah. With our blurbs, we put the contributor the blurbs the blurb errs picture there. Uh, I haven't seen that in many other books because I, I just think it's just much more interesting to see the face of the person who gave you the blurb or in your case the contribution. Yeah, and if you have 22 people, you could do a really nice collage, you know, like yeah. four by five high. Um, get this logo on a shirt or something and make sure that everybody who's being pictured gets a photograph with, you know, so that it's not just some random picture, but so that they all yeah. are kind of consistent saying that we're, you know, we're contributing to the marketing apocalypse or helping you survive. We're not making yeah, a marketing apocalypse, we're helping you survive it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, 
um, you can do a lot with you know having the contributors but be careful about voice because something yeah. like that will get lost if um, if you're not careful well you, you know when Sean and I obviously we co-authored ape but in a sense only I only my voice so it's when it's I it's always guy we refers to both of us but there's never a case where an I first person in ape is Sean speaking right even oh. if I wrote content I wrote in the third person uh, <laughs> you know just because it's easier uh, to make sure that the person is reading uh, right stays the same and you know with contributions you'll have a little bit of an easier job because I'm guessing that the contributions will break at chapters um, but uh -huh. you'll still need to make sure that you know if one contributor is writing in past tense that they're all writing in past or you know if one's writing in you know future you just make sure that your tenses it's consistent. are you know consistent and then yep. formatting and all that stuff but guy made it interesting guy said uh, you know he was like I'm glad I made you he kind of you know, quipped. I'm glad I made you my editor. You know, you made a cool cover. Da 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 da. You know, I have design chops, but I am way too close to Ape to be able to design the cover. I couldn't have designed the cover of Ape because I would have had preconceptions of what I thought it should be, and then not have been able to look at it objectively and change stuff. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we say, even if you're a capable designer, you know, it's not. You know, being able to design your own cover isn't about whether or not you know how to use Photoshop, it's whether or not you can be objective and not, uh -oh. um, you know, d delete stuff or change your brand or you know change the title or something like that. Yeah. You, know, um, you you liked the book and you've just always conceived of it as the brand survival guide to marketing apocalypse. But you know, a third person view can come in and say, you know, an outside perspective is good. So. Yeah, even definitely. If design, even if you have design chops, uh, you should still consider hiring people. And, uh, that's well, one of the first people I reached out to was the artist for it. He, um, it's the same guy that did the illustrations, and there's a book called Winning the Story Wars. Hmm. And so I hunted him down right away, and um, his name is Drew Beam. He's doing all the art for the book because I knew, same thing like you, I have basic design chops, but uh, I'll spend hours and hours working on something that won't look right anyway. Right. But yeah, so I think that you're on the right track. Um, oh, Peggy, do you want to talk about Twitter? Um, I just had a couple of notes on Twitter. Um, for your background on Twitter, you have um, Where the Wild Things Are. <laughs> on my personal account, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what the thing is? You, you know, everything's public, so it's not really your personal account because people yeah, will yeah. look for that too, so... Um, you might want to coordinate that or just put something that makes a little bit more sense. You know? Yeah. And also you have um you have a Visify connected to to your Twitter for your um which is cool. I love I have one too. Uh, but I just don't know if maybe putting a link to one of your websites isn't a better idea. Yeah, I um we hadn't done any actual so I'd done some of the social media stuff in the background for this book until just a couple of days ago mm -hmm. when we finished up the contributor list and I had everybody up there. Yeah. And now we're gonna we're just kind of shifting to actually pushing it out a little bit more. So really what I was trying to do was get some content up in the background. Right. Um and build some minor interest ahead of time and then right. I haven't had a chance to go back through and redo everything yet. I right. haven't really officially told a lot of people about it, but mm -hmm. um, Well just it doesn't about have there. to be it doesn't have to be your book, but maybe something uh, I just don't know if that makes sense for your like your personal brand. No, it will. My uh, personal brain is just kind of gibberish until recently, so I hadn't had time to oh. go back to it. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, and one thing I would, I mean, with your Twitter account, right now your Twitter handle is Market Apocalypse um, because Marketing Apocalypse was too long for a Twitter handle, yeah. so it changed the word. Um, when I tried to, you know, manually type in your or at reply you, I always typed at marketing and it would never autocomplete it. Um, and I have to go back and find out how, you know, I think that you might just be better off being um, at Mike Ball. Yay. Uh, you know, instead of trying to, <laughs> you know. Well, especially Mike, if you write another book. Yeah. 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 Well, if you write another book, plus the fact that marketing apocalypse isn't fitting in Twitter anyway. 
You know, right. it's not like it's you can be marketing apocalypse. You're market ocalypse. <laughs> sounds like the bad guy in a James Bond film or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would I would consider, you know, um, I would do your name, and I bet it's taken because you only have. It's not taken because you only have one L. It was taken before I did my first account for really? my personal one. Yeah, somebody else had like the three versions of it that I tried, so that's why I gave up on that. That's so what frustrating. So, do you have a personal Twitter? Yeah, or it's at yeah, it's at um, creative. I think all one word. That is hard. That's really hard though because it doesn't. I couldn't figure out what it was. It took me a minute because it blends together. You know, is one kind of. Well, to be honest, before I started working in social media all the time, I didn't like Twitter that much. Uh -huh. And then I, got it. It. <laughs> then I got addicted to it, yeah. Then I got guy. addicted to it, so. Yeah, that's funny. I love Twitter. I'll say oh, it. Here. But you love everything. It's true. <laughs> uh, Except for chocolate. I don't love chocolate. <laughs> Mike, the Twitter handle, the Mike Ball, is not taken. So. Ooh. Oh, it is now. I just On took it. it. I'll sell it to you. No. <laughs> so, the, the Twitter, the Mike Ball, um, and then because Market Ocalypse, I can barely even say it. Market Ocalypse yeah, doesn't it's a even. Tongue twister. Uh, it's a tongue twister. You could always get Ball the book. I <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. could go the wrong direction. Yep. <laughs> you got to be careful with that. <laughs> So um so look, we're pretty we're like a little over time guy do you want to say anything to or do you have some last like closing up comments on? Yeah no I I I really enjoyed this uh, I think it's a lot of fun it's it's intellectually challenging or at least for me maybe not for Sean but you know, <laughs> to come up with feedback like this and so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you got something out of it and uh, I, I hope between our books and and our feedback sessions like this you know you you just Become this great author and just, you know, remember us when you're rich and famous. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Yeah. And stay Likewise. Uh, <laughs> stay in touch with us on, you know, Google Plus and email and stuff like that. Um, let us know how things are progressing. We can always, you know, reconvene and, you know, do a where they are now. You know, when Mike Ball is the Mike Ball and has, you know, a million followers on Twitter, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. This this could Good, be, so. you know, this is like, this is like, you know, the class of um, 2013, right? This is like the first, first year that <laughs> yeah. Harvard had a class, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you guys are game, I had an idea, and Sean and Guy didn't answer. Um, but I, I thought it would be really neat to follow up with you guys if you if you wanted to work on the suggestions that we gave you, and maybe follow up, and we could put a blog post together to put on the eight um, eight the book blog site to see you know what suggestions were helpful, you know what you what you implemented. Did you get any ideas? And uh, even could... just since you read the book. Yeah, we could do before and after covers, stuff like that. That would be fun. Uh -huh. Yeah, that would be awesome. Such a great idea, Peg. Assuming the after is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If we listen, it will be. Yeah. Well, that's, a, well, that's you, the thing you, about advice. You have to listen to it. You, you should all take screenshots of your Amazon ranking right now, and then you know, before and after Amazon ranking, too. Perfect. <laughs> Sean, I put you on camera. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not going to design a cover for everybody. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Jeez. But, you know, if you, you know, send us your stuff because we definitely want to stay in touch and figure out, you know. Well, we'll see you in the ape community, like, every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's actually my favorite place to hang out on Google Plus right now. Woohoo! Awesome. Everybody's favorite because we rock in there. Yeah. I think we should charge people for joining now. It would be a country club. You need two Only sponsors. Us in. Yeah, two sponsors and a hundred thousand dollars to join. There you go. Cool. Or leave a five star Actually review. one of my friends joined today and she looked at that like who's in our community and she was like, Holy smokes, it's like a who's who of authors and I was like, I know. Every once in a while somebody comments and I'm like, Oh, Shoot, I didn't know Scott Monty was in here. <laughs> hey Scott Monty. Oh no, I don't think he's written a has Scott Monty written a book yet? I don't know, but he can definitely get you Mustangs. Awesome. I'll have to yeah. 
That's basically coming in. Um, so I think that we're just about all set. Thank you so much um, to everybody who's watching. If, if there's anyone watching, thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> if not, I hope you enjoyed the video somewhat. Maybe my kids. I don't know. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for coming. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you for Thank all you, your Peggy, advice. Thank you, Peggy, for hosting. Oh, thanks. <laughs>